Okay. In the present situation, I'm of the opinion that East Asia is a key point. Essentially hinging on the US-Japan alliance directed against, so it is interpreted, North Korea and China. Now, they are trying then to wind up Taiwan, the other China, and South Korea, the other Korea, as allies. And formally they are allies and they are participating in exercises. But there are very strong movements to the country inside. And that is seen very clearly in the newly elected president of China and president of South Korea. They go in for negotiation. I have been myself several times to North Korea. And many, many times, about once a year, since 1973 to China. And I don't think there's any particular difficulty making peace with them. Since you are talking now about what I'm doing right now, let me just elaborate a little bit. When I am in Pyongyang, it is quite clear that they have three goals. And you know, you have to know the goals of the parties to see to what extent they can be met. And goal number one is to change the Armistice Agreement of 1953 that gave rise to the demilitarized zone. The soldiers were said, no more fighting. You all move back one kilometer. So the demilitarized zone, by definition, is two kilometers broad. And it is 250 long. In other words, 500 square kilometers. That's how it happened. But they say that's not good enough. You have to have a peace treaty. So they are essentially saying, let us keep this division for the time being, have a peace treaty. And the second goal is normalization of diplomatic relations. And that is with Seoul, with Tokyo, with Washington. They want exchange of embassies. And the third goal is a denuclearized Korean Peninsula. The end of their nuclear arms and the end of the nuclear arms by the, let us call it, US-South Korean alliance, but essentially by the US in South Korea, inspected by the United Nations. Well, if you, I think these are three totally acceptable goals. I think the problem of the West is that the third goal is not acceptable for the US. They want to keep their um, nuclear weapons. They want to have it as a forward base in case of anything with China, whether they are planning something or they think like China is planning something. Yeah, they want to keep it. Well, that's not the way to make peace in the region. So I think the way forward would be to send to North Korea. Okay. We'll take you on your word. Please prepare in writing the instruments for all this. What does the peace treaty look like in your way of thinking? Point two. What does normalization look like in your way of thinking? And point three. You mentioned a UN inspection, a nuclear free Korean Peninsula, spell out the details. Now, needless to say, when those details are spelled out, there will be a lot of dialogue. And that dialogue is important. 
And we came very close to that dialogue and the bill came. Very close to it. It was even the question of who takes the first step. And you see, it was a question of, in a sense, um, well, there were many things, normalization of North Korea and uh, many diplomatic relations and denuclearization of the peninsula. And I was active in that one and say that you don't take a first step, you take the two steps at the same time. It's a question of two ambassadors going through a door. You first, you first. And they may agree simply to squeeze themselves tightly together and go to do it. Which is not a bad solution. And um, one needs metaphors like that very often in the media. So I use that kind of thing. So having said that, I felt when I feel that we would come much closer that way. And that way, that can be done. However, <clears throat> there is somebody who wants a totally different ending of North Korea. And uh, North Korea has been uppity. Unverschämt. Simply being up. Well, to that the North Koreans could say at point that most Westerners don't know. Look, in 1952, during the Korean War from 50 to 53, the US Air Force killed 3.5 million citizens in Pyongyang and destroyed the city. Uh, you would hardly expect us to forget that. So it is not that we are uppity. We have said never again 1952. For that reason, we have made ourselves, practically speaking, invulnerable by building not only our military capacity, but also our civilian, also refugees for the population underground and in sediments and invulnerable at the same time as we have an artillery capacity making Seoul and the region around Seoul highly vulnerable. I might say to keep 8 million people around Seoul hostage is not a nice policy. It isn't and the North Korean response to that, it's the most alternative in our country. Make ourselves invulnerable, and we use the vulnerability of the other side. We are not going to do it unless we are attacked. I could draw one conclusion, which is a little bit uh, strange in a sense. It always has to do with the intelligence. I find the North Korean and the Chinese thinking simply more intelligent than the US and the Western thinking. And I have my own definition of intelligent. Ability to keep many conceptual balls in the air at the same time. Many factors. The West and the US particularly has a tendency to focus on very few factors, maybe only one. And right now it's of course the North Korean nuclear capability. Then that nuclear capability can be dismantled. And I've just indicated how it can be done. But the US way of dealing with things is to deal with other states by threatening them into capitulation. North Korea knows that since they have been exposed to it. Hence, they have tried to make themselves invulnerable.